Hello. This video here, this fantastic drawing, is all uh, to help you understand how to, first of all, find the acceleration of your sled going down the slope. And to you do so using trigonometry. So I have the three main trig functions, or at least the mnemonic, the memory device that we use to uh, calculate them, SOKATOA. So is the memory trick to remember how you deal with a right triangle if you know the opposite and the hypotenuse sides around your angle. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. This ka is for the cosine function, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And this tangent is the, represents the opposite over the adjacent. So we'll be talking a little bit about trigonometry. We've done it in this class before. And um, if you've studied in other classes, this is just going to make it easier for you to understand. Remember <clears throat> our basic trigonometry of the um, sine function. If you haven't, this is just a nice little introduction. We've done it before in the class, and as you get to it in math, you will then say, oh, that's, that's familiar. That's the stuff we did in physics, and that'll help you there. <clears throat> My goal today is you kind of understand where this equation comes from, but the actual operation of taking a couple of numbers and plugging them into the formula and getting an answer is pretty quick and pretty easy. So we'll then practice that a couple of times at the end. To get a uh, three on the math calculations when it comes to acceleration, um, as well as one other problem, getting the uh, distance that the sled jumps in the air, um, you only need to just plug and chug, get me a number, get me an answer. You don't need to understand the trigonometry. If you're going to then go for a 3.5 or a four, I'm gonna have you explain some trigonometry problems, uh, one or two, depending on what grade you want. and it won't be this one, but this is an example of showing what it means to explain where an equation comes from, how we derived it. So I'm going to derive this equation for you, and then we're going to solve it together maybe a couple times. Now, this all comes from Newton's second law, maybe the most familiar or, or famous equation in all of physics, except for E equals MC squared. This is pretty basic, F equals MA. A lot of kids get exposed to that at a simple level in middle school or elementary school. We've used it this year already. F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. So that comes from Sir Isaac Newton, his second law. This is on, on an inclined plane. By that, I just mean anything with an angle to it. And in this case, it's our sledding slope. And we're going to say this is a simple version that has no friction. We're not going to take that into account for this problem. So we're going to have a, a simpler set of forces. But we're going to want to do a diagram and start up by diagramming the forces to solve our, our problem. Our, our goal is to find the acceleration, A. What is the acceleration going down the slope? And I can tell you that to do so, we'll use some forces. F here is the force pushing the sled down, um, and we'll use some trigonometry. Now, I'm, I've jumped ahead there with that little bit of information. I actually am jumping ahead even more. Here is the actual formula you'll use at the end of this. When you are just getting your answer for the uh, sledding project, you're just going to plug the acceleration of gravity we know to be 9.81 meters per second squared. I said you have my full permission to just use the number 10, which is easier to remember. Makes your math easier. 10 meters per second squared times the sine of this angle. So these trig problems only work if you have a right angle. And you need to know, in this case, the angle in order to find one of these other functions. So you need the angle and one other length over the triangle, uh, or in this case, force to find the acceleration. So let's say here's our sledding slope. We're going to start by giving it an angle. I'm going to say in this case it's 20 degrees. So we'll say right here is angle theta. I hate this, but that's just the standard math. People love using this Greek letter theta. It could be anything. Um, we could call it pepperoni and sausage pizza with anchovies. We could call it angle S for slope. I'm just going to stick with this math convention and use this Greek letter theta, which is a circle. It's kind of a curly Q up top and a line through the middle it's going to be our angle. And we're going to say the slope is, like I just said, 20 degrees equals 20 degrees. Okay. Now, now that we have our angle, it has to be a right angle. So over here, I've got this corner symbol, which tells me this is 90 degrees. These two are perpendicular to each other. And I know this is 90 degrees and this is 20 degrees. And if we cared, we could figure out what that is. So we're going to start with this formula. F equals MA. And I'm just going to write it here. 
Force equals mass times acceleration. If I get hit by the force, it could be a, a punch, a semi-truck, a water balloon, um, a paintball bullet. The two variables that determine how much that hurts or how much it impacts me are how much that object weighs, its mass, and how fast it's changing its speed, its acceleration. All right. F equals MA. We want to solve for A, though, so I'm going to rearrange this right here. I want to get A all alone on one side of the equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by M. And as you know, then this would cancel out. And we would have A equals force divided by mass. I'm going to rearrange that and say A equals F divided by M. <clears throat> and um, I still haven't gotten down to this yet, but let me draw some forces now on my diagram. I've jumped ahead of myself, I don't know why, but and included that already I know that what I'm interested in is the force making the sled go downhill. And there's my answer. That force should be mass times gravity times the sine of theta. So first let me draw a triangle, another little right triangle with my sled and the forces acting on it. And then we'll talk a little bit about what sign means. I'll review that. So here we go. The first force, the only force we know making this thing move is gravity. And gravity only pulls straight down. Now, it can't go straight down because the Earth is in the way. And so since it's on a weird semi-frictionless snow slope, right, as gravity's pushing down, it kind of ends up going downhill. So it goes in that direction. But the only force making that happen is gravity pulling it straight down. I'm going to draw right from the center of mass in the sled system. I'm going to draw a vector. There's gravity pulling down. And I'm going to call that force, that force equals the mass of the sled times acceleration. Mass times acceleration. In this case, the acceleration of gravity. So I'm going to call that mg, mass times the acceleration of gravity. Now, if I know the mass, if we just weigh you and your sled, right, and we know the acceleration of gravity, we'll say, um, 9.8, we'll say 5 for this, this equation here, 5 meters per second squared, I can multiply those two things. So now we have a known force. We're trying to figure out the acceleration going down the hill, and we're starting to get some actual known numbers to work with. Okay, So we have this force in this direction is whatever your sled system weighs with you in it, your mass, times the acceleration of gravity. Now we have some other forces. Uh, for example, this has a component that goes down the hill, parallel to the slope. And it has a component also that goes perpendicular to the slope. We call that the reaction force. Just like right now, I'm putting a force on the floor because I have mass and accelerating. Uh, the Earth's gravity is trying to pull me down. But I'm not going anywhere. The net force is zero. Newton's third law is that every Action is an equal and opposite reaction. Every force has an equal and opposite force. So the ground's pushing back up on me and holding me here. We call that the normal force. Here on the slope, the normal force is perpendicular to the slope. So this is the reaction force. The sled has some impact, maybe crunching the snow down a little bit. And the earth and snow are holding the sled up. Uh, it's not crashing down into the core of the earth. It's being held up by the ground. And that force is pushing back at exactly the same amount. So there's an equal and opposite force up here. I'm trying to make it the same length. If you've worked with vectors, you know that's how that works. That shows the magnitude is the same. It should be exactly the same. We call that the normal force. So they cancel each other out, and they're not making it move. The sled isn't crushing into the core or flying up into the air. Um, it's staying on the slope there. And there is another force of gravity, which would be slowing down our descent down the slope. And we're not going to talk about it right now. So there's our main forces. Now, if you have worked with vectors before, you know you can add these two things together. And this, this orange component could be added in down here, and that completes our triangle. And we have a little right triangle here. Opposite the triangle here, we have this hypotenuse. And it's actually the same, a similar triangle to this main one, the slope. So we know that, for example, this angle right here is theta. It's 20 degrees. So there we go. We have <clears throat> now our right triangle. We can do some <clears throat> trigonometry. I've said I think that this force, this orange arrow represents this vector going down the slope, and that force 
could be calculated by taking the mass of the sled system times the acceleration of gravity times the sine of 20 degrees, uh, mg sine theta. And here's why. So first of all, in trigonometry, we have three main trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent. And the way we remember how you divide the uh, quantities, the magnitudes of the sides of a triangle to find the sine is you take the opposite and divide it by the hypotenuse. This is our memory trick. So so ka toa, so is for sine, opposite of our hypotenuse. Ka is for cosine, we have the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tangent is, or toa is for tangent, the opposite side over the adjacent side. So here we have in the big triangle here, here is our angle theta. And the longest side, the one that's opposite the, the 90 degree right angle, the longest side is the hypotenuse. That's what the H stands for. The side that's connected to theta is the adjacent side. And whatever is on the far other part of the triangle, across from theta, our angle, this then is the opposite side. So for the sine function, I need to take the quantity of the opposite side and divide it by the quantity of the hypotenuse, and I, I have the sine. For example, the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 or 1 half. So whatever the sine of 20 degrees is, your calculator already knows it. Um, this smaller triangle now is a similar triangle here. We have our 90 degree angle, opposite it is gonna be the hypotenuse in blue. The hypotenuse, which we need for our formula, is just the amount of uh, mass times the acceleration of gravity. And we don't even need to know the mass. Here's a little preview. It ends up canceling out, so it's not here in our final answer. Now, the sine is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite is what we're interested in. That's the orange line here, the vector that, of force that forces the uh, sled to go downhill, and that's what we want to know. So we'd like to take this whole opposite over hypotenuse thing. I'm going to write over here <clears throat> sine equals... The opposite side, that's the one in orange, what we want. The opposite over the hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is gravity, and we know that sign here. Hypotenuse is mass times gravity, so that's the straight down component in the smaller uh, diagram, smaller triangle. So that's what sine means, this number divided by that number. Now what we want is orange. But we already know mg. So if we multiply sine times mg, I'm going to write it in blue here. We multiply sine by the hypotenuse, or mg. These would uh, allow us to cancel that out and find the force going down the slope, which is what we're interested in, the orange one. This is why we have mg is in blue, right? mg times the sine of theta. So all we need is mg times the sine of theta. Let me come over here and say, well, now we know this force. To get the acceleration, we need f divided by m, force divided by mass, but now we know the force. So I'm gonna rewrite this formula. A equals <clears throat> this force. mg times, oh lordy. <clears throat> the sine of theta. And then this whole thing is, of course, divided by mass. This is where I told you the mass just cancels out. So I have mass on both the top and bottom on the numerator and the denominator. So I'm just going to cancel that out. And that leaves me with this equation. Acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, or 10 meters per second squared, times whatever the sine of theta is. So when you get to the snow slope and you want to figure out what the um, <clears throat> acceleration is of your sled, you don't need to actually have us uh, time you and do some things. You could just use some trigonometry and all you need is to know what is the angle of the slope. Now, we have a, a little app on my phone and um, I can just put the phone on the slope and say, oh, this is a 20 degree angle and you're ready to do your math, which is kind of cool. Um, let's try right now, see if we can get an answer, just plug in some numbers. We already know we have a 20 degree slope in my diagram so I'm going to open up my phone's calculator. 
Many of you will be doing this kind of stuff on your, um, trying to point that so there's no glare, a cell phone. Maybe you already know this, but if you turn it sideways, all of a sudden you have a lot more buttons, including the trig functions down here. So one of those is the sign button there, and I'm going to press the sign button. What I'm going to press is, I'm going to say the force of gravity is, for this, this time, I'm going to say 10 meters per second squared times the sine of 20 degrees. So I'm going to say, to get the acceleration, I want 10 meters per second squared times the sine of 20 degrees, whatever that is. With my phone, what I have to do is start with the sign. I put in 20 degrees, I hit the sign button, and I get some number, and I multiply it by 10. And I'm done. So you could be basically five, 10 minutes off the bus and getting an answer for this. So I'm gonna put this as close to the camera as I can, and I'm gonna say 20 degrees. And I just press the sign button. I don't even need to say um, multiply by, I'm just gonna hit sign, and boom, I get this weird decimal. And it's 0.34 something. We're going to say for uh, the kind of precision I want in all of our math problems, you can just round it off to the 10th place for this project. <clears throat> so I'm going to just leave that number as it is. I'm going to multiply it by the acceleration of gravity times 10 meters per second squared equals. And now you can see that that number is 3.4. <clears throat> Coming over here, I can say I've solved this because I'm brilliant and I now know that my acceleration, that's what I'm looking for, equals 3.4 and all accelerations have the units, meters, oops, per second squared if you're using international kind of terms. Now you understand how we kind of derive this equation right here, where it comes from. Hopefully it makes sense to you. And now hopefully you appreciate all you need when we go to the sledding slope is the angle. How, how steep is the slope? Um, for this problem, you don't need math, you, the mass, how much you weigh. The, you will for other pro problems like calculating the momentum, but for this problem, you don't need it. All you need is that angle of the slope multiplied by the sine of it, uh, the sine of it times the acceleration of gravity, and you're done. I'm going to do another problem really fast. Let's say that we have a, I use the blue marker over here. Let's say we have a slope of 30 degrees. Theta equals 30 degrees. I already told you, I think that the sine of theta the sine of 30 degrees is one half. So if I know I have that slope, sine of 30 degrees equals 0.5 and then we'll see what, if we can get the acceleration for it. So the acceleration would be 9.8. I'm going to do this one a little differently, a little different number. Instead of saying 10, I'll say 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine, oh my lord, can't believe they let me teach, the sine of theta. And then we'll do it together right now. This is how fast it'll be when you get to the snow slope. I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to say that 30 degrees is my slope. I'm going to hit the sign button. See that? 0.5. I'm going to multiply that times 9.8 equals my acceleration. Many of you have already done this in your head. Is 4.9 meters per second squared. 4.9 meters per second squared. For this problem, you don't have to show me how to get the equation, how to do the diagram. I just need you to show me your work like this tell me what the acceleration is, make sure that you label it with units and then move on to the next problem. If you want to go above and beyond, I do need you to derive, to show me how you get the equation and explain how to use it. And you might do it once or twice. You might do it to, for the jump calculation. You might also then do it in uh, showing me how we could use this kind of a diagram, the, some basic information we have access to like the angle of the slope, the acceleration of gravity, and um, no, not the acceleration of gravity, the acceleration of your sled, some basic things like that, and then find out what is the vertical component, and on your own calculate and see if you can find the acceleration of gravity. 
<clears throat> there we go. Uh, I hope this was pretty clear. I hope that uh, you do well in some practice problems and then you find it's really easy to complete your sledding project. Any questions you have, just email me and I'll see you in class.